we'd uh, like to have a Merry Christmas. And the best way to have a Merry Christmas is to try to continue to play well uh, tomorrow night against Alabama State. Um, this will be a, a return uh, of Coach Tony Matlock to uh, Neville Arena, where he was an assistant for four years under Coach Barbie. I hope he gets uh, a nice greeting from, from our fans. Uh, uh, Coach Matlock is uh, very well respected in our industry. Been doing it a long time, been doing it the right way. Um, and um, part of the reason why we're playing Alabama State was uh, uh, in recognition of him and his, his career and his excellence. They, they played everybody. Uh, they played everybody. Uh, they played one of the toughest schedules in the country, um, having already played Ole Miss and uh, played them to a 10 point game. They played Memphis, they played Iowa. Uh, they played uh, USC uh, the other night. Um, and so they're not going to be uh, at all intimidated by us or Neville Arena, the competition. Um, and obviously it's uh, uh, the SWAC has got a history of having great upsets, um, both this year uh, as well as last season. Um, and so, uh, um, you know, obviously uh, – you know, they make eight threes a game. They play really fast. Uh, they got three guards that lead them in scoring, including Coach Matlock's son, who's an outstanding player. Um, and, um, you know, it'll be a very exciting game. It'll be a very, very up-tempo game. Uh, they like to play fast. Um, you know, Coach plays 10, 11 guys. They play hard. Um, and, uh, you know, so we'll have, to, we'll have to continue to play well for us. We've taken care of the basketball. We've shot it well. We've shared it well. Um, our one-on-one closeouts will be challenged against uh, some players that can really, really make make uh, some you know some instant offense. Transition defense is going to be important for us as well. Pepe, you said it after the USC game, but the the ones Trey and Aiden getting better on the defensive end from game one to game. I just I wanted to ask you a little bit more about that and just kind of kind of where you've seen them grow that much because that was a concern I know early in the year. Well, I think they both have had a recognition that um, um, and uh, that it's it's an area that we've talked about from the beginning of the season that we need to continue to focus on and get better at and you know and 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 get challenged. Um, you know, we we've lost two games so far and Baylor's backcourt and 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 uh, Appalachian State's backcourt outplayed us um, and and I think those guys uh, didn't take that as a criticism it's just a fact and so therefore they recognize all of our guards that um, that that competing on every position and and uh, getting some help from our bigs and 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 or, or, you know or, or our team you know defense is the one thing that you can kind of control control your destiny a little bit and so obviously it's been a it's been a big focus. I think Trey and Aiden's recognition as younger players um, with knowing whether it be the learning curve and then knowing that, you know, you know, night in and night out, everybody's got pretty good guards. The great teams have got great guards and frontline players. Um, and so a guard's got to bring it every night. Is Aiden mentioned earlier today about this as a defender, he wants to work on like taking more more on ball charges. Now that we're a little bit into the season, you've mentioned all the charge rules that you've kind of been kind of not sure if you like at all. Yeah. How, do, how do you feel about that now? And, and how are you coaching players to kind of take more charges yeah. with the new rule? Well, it's really hard to coach it and teach it because it's, you know, it's obviously it's a contact play and, you know, you don't always like some coaches like to drill it in practice and I don't believe in that. Um, what Aiden's talking about is his ability to take an on-ball charge, that rule hasn't changed. So if you're the primary defender, if you can beat guys to spots, and Aiden has got the quickness to beat guys to spots, it was one of the things that that helped Jared Harper defensively was he would take a charge or two a game, and people weren't willing to try to line him up because he'd beat him in a spot, he'd put him on the floor. And, um, and Aiden, Aiden doesn't have that in his bag yet. But he's got the quickness to be able to do it. He's got the basketball IQ to be able to do it. So th 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 that's something officials are willing to call on ball charges when guys lower their shoulder. And so says that's something that, that all of our guards could do a better job of doing. It's the secondary defender that is really limited in their ability to help that one-on-one uh, -on -one closeout. Uh, 
BP, you've you've played teams uh, from across Alabama. You know, bringing them in here for this game. How much do you like keeping it in in the state as much as you can? I know y'all try to get a, a good yeah. non conference schedule, but having games like this against Alabama State, y'all play North Alabama a while back. Yeah, like games no, like that. It, I just think it's the right thing to do, um, and and I know that that um, you know these games there's there's a lot to lose and not a, not not a ton to gain. Um, but when you play against a team that plays a good style like this with good talent and well coached, um, and, 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 you know, obviously for them, this would be, and, and I'll tell you, they play hard. Um, they got down against USC and they never quit. They kept playing, uh, had they, they all played USC in the second half. Um, you know, and, uh, so, um, but I guess just, it's, it's, it, it's the right thing to do if we're going to go ahead and and play these guarantee games. We might as well keep the guarantees here at home. You, you were yesterday kind of posting about all the all the uh, football signing day stuff. Kind of from a basketball perspective, you you've been acknowledging of like it's sometimes difficult to to recruit at a school that's so football dominant. But kind of what from your end of of the recruiting side of it can you do to kind of like you know to to get Auburn basketball recruiting to where it's been recently at such a football heavy school? I'll say that again. The last part of your question. Like, I guess kind of like. What are you telling in, in your recruiting pitch to, to some of these kids to, to come to where Auburn's been now as a highly you know, successful basketball recruiting school at a school that's historically known for its football team? Yeah, well, I'm, I mean, I'm just a fan, and, and Hugh's my friend, and I'm so happy for him and grateful that he's given us hope and, and that he's got the kids believing and he's got the community believing. And, I mean, look, we – we could have, should have beaten the top two teams in the country in Alabama and Georgia this year. Everybody saw that with a with a challenged roster. What, what what's the man going to do when he when he when he when he can line up and have some of the same ammunition that the opponents have? So I'm just I'm just excited for it. So I I do retweet that stuff just occasionally, just to you know lend my support. And yesterday was obviously a fun day. It was freezing, and uh, excited for him. Um, you know, and then, you know, for us, I, I hope that – I know one thing that's important is it's important to be able to provide an environment where, you know, football can take their prospects to what is one of the top uh, home court advantages in all of college basketball. I still – I retweeted that yesterday also. There was somebody put out that we were one of the top ten venues in college basketball as far as atmosphere is concerned every now and then. The first was, was Fog Allen. And so the fact that Auburn's on that list – is something that we work to try to have, but but we, we we can't do that by ourselves. It's because our fans care. The Auburn family comes out. The jungle is amazing, and um, that's why I feel a responsibility to continue to show them good basketball, play well, and they'll keep coming back. With the the assist rate so high this year, obviously Trey and Aiden are putting up a great assist to turnover ratio, but. How much has it helped you guys that y'all have like Chad and Jalen and like pretty much everybody who hits the floor for y'all can can get assist and and, and move the ball? Well, I mean everybody it, it, it everybody expects the the point guards have to get the ball in their hands a lot, and and um, one of the things my job is to try to put guys in positions to be successful, and not ask them to do things that they're not capable of doing, and then therefore they turn the ball over. I think both Trey and Aiden value possessions. Um, and we don't have as many wasted possessions uh, this year. We still have some, and um, but the fact that you can put the ball in, let's say, Jalen Williams or, or Chad Baker's hands, who, who have got a little bit more size, a little bit more length, to be able to make plays for themselves and others, and they're, they both got high IQ, and they're both unselfish players, and so it gives us – you know, it gives us some, you know, weapons. And, look, pa making the extra pass or the right pass is contagious. Also, taking bad shots is contagious. Well, you're going to just took one, I'm going to take one. And that's just we've had – we haven't had a lot of that. Um, and they're, they're, and, and we, we, we hope we don't see much of that. 